Welcome to the London School of English Live. Uh, today, our expert English language trainer, John Dyson, will talk about 10 great films uh, you can watch to help you expand your business English vocabulary and uh, improve uh, your use of English in different business scenarios. Here with us today, we also have Perrine Chor from our sales team. And uh, before we start with the main content, Perrine, over to you for a few words about our business and professional English training in London and online. Thank you, Olga. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to talk to you about our business English uh, course options. So whether you are um, you are able to travel to London or uh, you would prefer to stay at home, just bear in mind that we have wonderful options for you to train with us at the London School of English. With the easing of travel restrictions to the UK, we really hope that you will be able to join us for our face-to-face -face courses. We have part-time courses for focusing on business English and full-time courses. And if you prefer a mix of part-time courses and some time to work with your private trainer, such as John, we have combination courses as well. So feel free to contact us. Um, these are the different settings. As you can see, we are working um, in a classroom environment, which is imitating a business-like uh, setting. Uh, we have wonderful uh, participants from all around the world that are joining us in London and online. So if you have any questions about our business and professional English courses, just feel free to contact us at um, clients at londonschool.com. And please stay tuned uh, until the end as well, where you can ask us our further questions. Thank you very much, Perrine. Uh, and uh, John, now over to you for the main content. Thanks very much, Olga. And uh, thanks, Perrin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live stream from the London School of English. My name is John Dyson, and I'm one of the trainers here at London School of English, specializing in business English. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today on our live stream. And today we're looking at films. Uh, I'm a great moviegoer myself, not so much during the pandemic, but uh, when I was given the chance to choose the 10 best films about the world of business, I jumped at the chance, at the opportunity. I could have included a lot of a lot more films in this list, but I've managed to narrow the list down to 10. So first of all, what were my criteria for the choices I made? Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I thought they need to be good examples or contain good examples of business vocabulary, a lot of business expressions. Um, they also need to be compelling themes and stories, exciting themes and stories. So stories that you really want to watch. Um, I've chosen films from throughout history. Most of the films tend to be in the 21st century, but my last film goes back quite a lot further than that. And finally, um, high quality, high quality content and high quality performances, because we, I think, you know, our business leaders and, and entrepreneurs nowadays, they're all charismatic people. So without any more hesitation, I'll move on to uh, my list. And I'm going down from number 10 to number one in no particular order. So number 10, number 10 is a film called Steve Jobs. And I probably don't need to tell you too much about this film. Of course, it is about the life of the, um, the Apple leader. And it covers 14 years. Um, in his life, which is the period between 1984 and 1988, 1998. So it's the early part of the career of um, the co-founder of Apple, Steve Jobs. And it's a it's a great film. And, and uh, I believe we have a, a short excerpt which we could watch of this film. So let's just watch a little bit of Steve Jobs. What do you do? What do you do? You're not an engineer. You're not an engineer. You're not a designer. You're not a designer. You can't put a hammer you to can't a put nail. a hammer to a oh. What do you do? You're not an engineer. You're not a designer. You can't put a hammer to a nail. 
I built the circuit board, the graphical interface was stolen. So how come 10 times in a day, I read Steve Jobs as a genius? What do you do? Musicians play their instruments. I play the orchestra. Wow, that's a great line. Musicians play their instruments. I play the orchestra. So really this film covers the themes of leadership and personal charisma, management in general. Yes, you know, people management, management of a great product. And of course, because it, it is focused around three product launches, the film, then it also focuses on presentation skills. And Steve Jobs was a great presenter. OK, let's move on to number nine. Number nine is a film called The Big Short. And this film, as you can recognize there, you have Ryan Gosling and Brad Pitt in the poster. And it's based on a book from 2010 called The Big Short inside the doomsday machine by a journalist called michael lewis showing how the financial crisis of 2007 2008 was triggered by the united states housing mortgage bubble so this is a, a great film which covers three separate but parallel storylines throughout the film and again we have a clip to show you of uh, one of the very colorful characters in this film michael how are you i found something really interesting the whole housing market is propped up on these bad loans they will fail the housing market is rock solid it's a time bomb so Mike Burry, who gets his hair cut at Supercuts and doesn't wear shoes, knows more than Alan Greenspan. Dr. Mike Burry, yes, he does. <laughs> right. So as he says, as you can see, he's a rather um, interesting character. He's a financial analyst, but he wears no shoes in his office. He likes bouncing tennis balls around. And he also has a drum kit in his office. And remember what he says at one point during that clip. The whole housing market is propped up on bad loans. And he was right, but his bosses didn't believe him. He very nearly got the sack. So, yeah, I would recommend uh, The Big Short. It's a, it's a very colourful and clever film, very well made. OK, let's move on to number eight on our list. Number eight is a film called Joy. And this is a film uh, about starring Jennifer Lawrence as the lead protagonist and Bradley Cooper. And it's uh, made in 2015. It's a biographical drama about a divorced mother, played by Jennifer Lawrence, who becomes the founder and matriarch of a powerful family business. And I think this is, this is very much about the struggle of a woman in her position, um, to, lacking support, uh, and also creating products that other people make a lot of money out of. And once again, we have an interesting little clip from this film. Christy, look at me. I want you to remember something. Because a lot of times people get nice things and they start to think differently. We got here from hard work, patience and humility. So I want to tell you, don't ever think that the world owes you anything. Because it doesn't. The world doesn't owe you a thing. Right. That's the message in the, the first part of that clip. The world doesn't owe you a thing. Hard work and humility. So it's very much a story of, um, you know, from, from growing from nothing to making a, a product, which is a very simple product. It's actually a, a, a squeegee mop for cleaning your floor with soap and water. But it sells like hotcakes, as we say. It sells like hotcakes. And I believe we have another short clip from this film. It's a very powerful trailer for this film. Never speak on my behalf about my business again. Wow, dramatic. So this is a woman who knows her own mind and knows that she is the one who is leading this business. Never speak on my behalf 
about my business again. So a very powerful performance by Jennifer Lawrence and, and a very re a good reflection of the struggle that women have had to uh, make it in the world of business. Because when I was looking, I was researching this talk, it's quite difficult to find films with strong women characters, films about business with strong women characters. So that is surely a good example, as is the next film on my list, number seven. This is called The Intern. And I'm sure you recognize uh, the two actors there. We've got Anne Hathaway, uh, who plays a character called Jules Austin. And she's a CEO and founder of a company called About the Fit, which is a New York-based e-commerce fashion startup. So in the span of 18 months, she builds her startup from her own kitchen to a, a fully grown company with more than 200 employees. So it's a very fine example of entrepreneurship. And of course, the guy on the left in the poster is Robert De Niro, who is playing quite an interesting role as Miss Austin's senior intern. And an intern is somebody who's learning about the business, but... Uh, it ends up being a good friendship between the two of them. And also, what is quite a positive role model from this film is that um, her husband, that is Anne, um, Jules' husband, Matt, plays a stay-at-home dad who gives up his career to take care of the daughter. So it's a feel-good film and it sends out a good message. And it's entertaining. It's Yeah, it's what I would call a feel-good film. Okay, moving on. Number six on my list is The Founder. Now, The Founder is based on a really great central performance by Michael Keaton. Uh, he plays the part of Ray Kroc, who was a businessman, a salesman, who basically was driving around America trying to sell products that weren't particularly good, until one day he visits a roadside restaurant run by two brothers. What are their names? The McDonald's brothers. Yeah. So it's the story throughout of his creation of the McDonald's fast food restaurant chain. Now, it's, a, it's quite an interesting story because, um, in fact, the two McDonald's brothers weren't particularly ambitious. They were just happy to have their one restaurant serving good quality hamburgers quickly to their customers. Um, so it, it's not a Hollywood sentimental kind of film because um, by the end, you feel in two minds about the main character, Ray Kroc, because what he does essentially is turn McDonald's into a franchise business. And he makes a lot of money out of that. The McDonald's brothers who actually created the product and the kind of service, well, their ending wasn't quite as happy. But there is a wonderful scene, a wonderful scene in this film where the two brothers explain with great enthusiasm how they started the company and how they revolutionized their operations in order to deliver hamburgers from the order to the customer within 30 seconds. They get their team to practice outside in the car park in a mock kitchen and they draw on the floor in chalk and they ask their staff to move around so quickly and so graciously and efficiently that they can create and serve, wrap and serve the hamburger in less than 30 seconds. So great efficiency in production line, if you like. So, yeah, that's a, a standout moment in that film. But it is well worth seeing because the central performance, he was nominated for an Oscar. He didn't win it, but it was a you know, well-deserved nomination. Okay, so we've seen five of my 10 films and it's time for a quiz. We all love a quiz, don't we? So if you're ready, uh, I'm gonna show you five quotes and all you need to do is decide which of the films that I've talked about is the quote taken from. And to make it a little bit easier, we've got the answers in a multiple choice format. So if you know the answers, Please write them down in the chat, which you can you have on your screen. So let's go with the first one, question A. And the quote is, risk taker, rule breaker, game changer. 
So this quote, it does it refer to Steve Jobs, Joy, the big short, or the intern? Oh. Actually, <laughs> it refers to the founder, which is the McDonald's film. Let's move on to the next question. This quote, where is this taken from? Can a great man be a good man? Okay, so which of those films is about, we now know, a great man? Is it Joy? Is it The Big Short? Is it The Intern? Or is it Steve Jobs or The Founder? Can a great man be a good man? Well, let's wait and see. Mm, yep, yeah, okay. And the answer is Steve Jobs. Absolutely. Because in the film, actually, it does raise the issue of the fact that Steve Jobs had a daughter who he never really had a proper relationship with. So there is that moral element in that film. Okay, the next one. The next quote is, in America, the ordinary needs the extraordinary every single day. The ordinary needs the extraordinary every single day. So is that the founder or Steve Jobs or Joy or the big short or the intern? In America, the ordinary needs the extraordinary every single day so just think of a product which was very simple really but it made a big difference to many people's lives mostly women at that time i would say okay the answer is well done gary the answer is i think you got it right yes joy that's right the answer is joy well done gary and um as i firm well done to you as well welcome to you all and see lots of people putting answers down now Okay, and the next film, get ready to write down the answer as quickly as you can. Now, this quote is quite a long quote, but it's worth quoting. So it says, if the mortgage bonds were the match, then the CDOs were the kerosene-soaked rags. And the synthetic CDO was the atomic bomb with a drunk president holding his finger over the button. It was at that moment in that restaurant with that stupid look on his face that mark baum realized the whole world economy might collapse okay which film the founder steve jobs joy the big short or the intern mm, i think there's a this one might be a bit of giving giving the game away as we say there's a lot of quotes there. So this is a quote from, let's see, is anybody putting in the answer yet? Keep your answers coming, folks. Let's see. Nothing yet. Ah, yes, Hasaifa has put the correct answer. It's the big short. Well done, Hasaifa. The big short. Excellent. And finally, well, I'm sure you'll know this by a process of elimination. It's 2015. So this is the next one. This is question E. It's 2015. Are we really still critical of working mums? Notice the American spelling of mum. We spell it with a U. The Americans spell it with a, an O. Working mums? It's 2015. Are we still really critical of working mums? That's my American accent. Okay, so which film is that a quote from? The founder, Steve Jobs, Joy, The Big Short, or The Intern. Well done, Nora, as well. I saw on the previous answer, The Big Short. That's well done to you. Okay, Nora, it's actually, it's not Joy. It's The Intern. Yes, I forgot it right again, The Intern. Yes, so that's the film about um, working moms, which is exactly what Jules is in that film. Right, time is passing, so let's move on to the next film in the list. So, list. This is uh, film number five. We have five more films to go. So, number five is a film called The Corporation. 
And this is a, a, um, a documentary because there are an awful lot of very good documentaries about um, business out there as well. And this film is quite an interesting one. It takes a psychological study of the organization, the corporation model, by looking at various case studies. And what it illustrates, what it tries to illustrate, that is that in its behavior, a corporation acts rather like a dangerous and destructive psychopath without any conscience, without any moral conscience. And we can see the effect that this psychopath has for our well-being and for our future. But we can also see how people with courage and intelligence and determination can stop these enormous corporations from kind of taking over our lives. Now, this is interesting because this film was made in 2003. So this is way before the Googles and Facebooks and um, apples of this world kind of uh, came to dominate the world. And in fact, I only discovered this yesterday, there is now a new documentary called The New Corporation, The Unnecessary Sequel. <laughs> it's called The Unnecessary Sequel. Or The Un... Sorry, no, that's not right. I'm saying it wrong. The New Corporation, The Unfortunately Necessary Sequel. That's right. So that's... Um, definitely worth looking out for now that this film is i don't know if it's available on streaming but it is available on dvd to buy and it's not expensive and it has a lot of really good extras a lot of um very interesting commentaries by um, members of the uh, businesses who appear in the film right moving on to number four number four is called glengarry glen ross Glengarry Glen Ross is based originally on a, a theatrical play, but it basically it's the story of two days in the lives of four real estate salesmen and how desperate they become when the corporate office, head office, sends a sales trainer to motivate them. And he motivates them by telling them that in a week's time, all of them, except for the two top salesmen, will be fired. So there's some amazing actors in, in this uh, film. Al Pacino, Alec Baldwin, Ed Harris, Jack Lemmon. And I think the standout performance is by uh, Alec Baldwin. As you can see in the picture, he makes a great speech. It's, it's known as the ABC speech. Always be closing meaning always be reaching the point where you're closing the sale. Okay, so the message you get about business from here is not a very optimistic message because it's basically saying business is like a jungle and it's the survival of the fittest. And those who aren't fit enough, well, they die basically. Not really, they just get sacked or fired. So yeah, but it's a very, very compelling film to watch. So it's basically a lot of sales vocabulary and a lot about organizational culture. Moving on to film number three, three more to go. This is a lovely film. This is called Tucker, The Man and His Dream. And it's uh, it stars Jeff Bridges and Joan Allen as his wife. And I imagine that a lot of people have never heard of this film. But it was directed by the man who directed The Godfather and Apocalypse Now. Yes, Francis Ford Coppola. So this is a period drama and it's set uh, shortly after World War II. And it's this, this man, Preston Tucker, has a tremendous vision about producing the best cars ever made. So he starts creating the car, gets the financing and starts to build a factory. And in a way, this film has a lot of parallels with the life of Francis Ford Coppola, who also wanted to build a big movie studio on his own and had a lot of struggles to do so. So it's a delightful film. It's a period drama. It's beautiful to look at. The car he designs looks fantastic. You have a charismatic, uh, central character who ultimately fails. That's a spoiler I've just given you. Uh, he ultimately fails, so his car doesn't work out, unfortunately, but he remains cheerful and enthusiastic throughout. 
and his wife played by joan allen has to look after their six children in the meantime so you know what they say behind every great man there's an even greater woman yeah it certainly was the case in in that because with six children he would have found that difficult to do as a single parent i'm sure but it's a lovely film i you know search it out number two in my list is the social network and I'm sure you all know which company The Social Network refers to. Actually, let me ask you, which film is The Social Network, which company, sorry, is The Social Network about? Just write your answers. Let's see who knows. As you can see in the picture, the, the main character is played by an actor called Jesse Eisenberg. And you also have um, Justin Timberlake stars in this film and the British actor Andrew Garfield and Rooney Mara. Thank you, Frank. Frank has put the answer up straight away. Facebook. Of course it is. <coughs> Excuse me. So the story basically covers uh, the moment when in 2003, one autumn night, Mark Zuckerberg was a Harvard undergraduate and a computer programming genius, and he sits down and starts working on a new idea. And in a fury of fast programming, what begins in his bedroom soon becomes a global social network and a revolution in communication. Six years and 500 million friends later, Mark Zuckerberg is the youngest billionaire in history. But success leads to personal and legal complications. So it's really a film around the themes of Social media, of course, company culture, leadership, trust, betrayal, business acumen, and I suppose entrepreneurship. Although Mark Zuckerberg never set out to be a successful entrepreneur, he just had an idea and it worked. This film is directed by a guy called David Fincher who is uh, one of the best directors working in Hollywood today. And it is beautiful to look at as well. And the music is, is excellent, really fits well. There's a lot of dialogue in this film, but I think because you probably all know the story more or less, it's probably going to help you to stay with the film and understand what you can of it. But it's a great, great acting performances and uh, a really compelling story. Right, we've reached number one in my list. And as I said at the beginning, we go back quite a long way for this film. We go back to 1941. The name of the film is Citizen Kane. Now, Citizen Kane is about a man called Charles Foster Kane, played by Orson Welles, the great actor and director. And in fact, he did direct this film as well as acting in it. And basically, what it is about is a, it's what we would call a biopic. It's a, a story telling the life of a famous person. And in this case, the famous person, Charles Foster Kane, is a millionaire newspaper tycoon. So he basically sets up one newspaper and then another and then another and makes a lot of money out of that and then moves into shipping and all sorts of things. The film's opening is quite notable because um, if you remember back in olden days, they used to show news reports in the cinemas before they showed the main film. And the opening of the film, the first five minutes, is a news report about Charles Foster Kane's life. So it's um, a news report just after he's died. And it uh, tells basically the, the story of his whole life and how he ended up dying lonely by himself in an enormous mansion called Xanadu with its own private zoo and everything made out of marble and the last word he said well I won't tell you that because that single word is obviously uh, one of the main themes in the film is what did he mean when he said that word and all the journalists are trying to find out what it is and they investigate these journalists so basically, the rest of the film is about these journalists trying to investigate what happened during his life and what that one word actually means. So it's about rise and fall. And I suppose you would talk about it in terms of leadership, 
charisma, personal charisma. Um, as I said, it's a biopic. It's about the media sector. And um, it is, for its time, 1941, it is uh, quite a remarkable film in the way that it is shot. Um, and it's very easily available, this film. So I would recommend watching Citizen Kane. I think it's, if you like films, that has got to be part of your film education. Okay, so to finish off very quickly, we've got another quiz. And this quiz is about the first, the last five films. Yes, the films I've just talked about, the second part of my talk. So again, we've got lines of dialogue from the uh, films number five to number one. So which one is which? I'll just read out the quote. Here's the first one. We lived on farms, then we lived in cities, and now we're going to live on the internet. So which film do you think that is? We have the films down there, the social network, Tucker, the corporation, Citizen Kane, or Glengarry Glen Ross. So let's see, which film do you think it is? Slip your answers down and send them into our chat. See, so give you a couple of seconds more. We'll wait for the answers to fly in from all over the world. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. Oh, yes, Nora. Well done. You got there in time. It's the social network. That's right, the social network. Thank you, Frank. Well done as well. So, yeah, that's the social network. And isn't it true that we are going to live on the internet? Well, we do live on the well, we are at the moment. OK, the second one. Here's the, the, the next quote. When I was a little kid, maybe five years old, in the old country, my mother used to say to me, she'd warn me, she'd say, don't get too close to people. You'll catch their dreams. You'll catch their dreams. So which in which of these films did someone have a dream? A vision, if you like. Was it? We know what the films are, don't we? Social Network, Tucker, The Man and His Dreams, The Corporation, Citizen Kane, or Glengarry Glen Ross. Yeah, I think the title gives the <laughs> gives the answer away in a way, because uh, you know you'll catch their dreams. Well done, Nora. It is Tucker. Yes, Tucker, The Man and His Dreams. Nice one. Okay, the third one. And this isn't actually a quote from the from the film. It's a quote from the publicity around the film. And what it says, in a word, wow, no two discs, including the feature, have ever been so fully packed with extra features. If there was ever one documentary worth owning, it's certainly this. OK, so what does that refer to? Which film does that refer to? I'm not going to read the titles out because I think you will know which film that refers to because there's a clue in what it says in the quote. So you can see the names of the films up there on screen. Let's see if you can tell me what the, the film is. And like I say, it's probably a film you hadn't heard of before, but I really do recommend watching it. It's, um, it's fascinating how they take a psychological approach to looking at you know, such a well-known business entity. Frank, I'm afraid it's not Citizen Kane. It's not Citizen Kane. It refers to a documentary. It is, in fact, The Corporation. Yeah, The Corporation. And don't forget the new version, which is the unfortunately necessary sequel, The New Corporation, which I assume, I haven't seen it, talks about Google and Facebook and Amazon and all of these enormous corporations which are eating up the world. Okay, the second one. So this is the penultimate question in the quiz. And this one, the quote is, I don't think there's one word that can describe a man's life. Well, Frank, you look a bit, you put a sad face on our chat. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, Citizen Kane. But try again, try again with this one. I don't think there's one word that can describe a man's life. So if you remember, I was talking about one of these films being something we call a biopic. 
and there have been several very good biopics throughout history. There's a, a, biopic, a biopic about Charlie Chaplin, who was a very good biopic about uh, Mahatma Gandhi, both directed by the British director um, Richard Attenborough. Okay, Frank, you got it this time. Um, Nora, not the corporation. This one is Citizen Kane. Because there is the one word which is kind of key because he says it is his last word before he dies. It's the word he says just before he dies. Everybody wants to know what it is. And you will, if you watch the film, you will find out what it is. Very simple. And finally, a great quote, a great quote. That watch costs more than your car. I made $970,000 last year. How much do you make? You see, pal, that's who I am. And you're nothing. Just a nice guy. Go home and play with your kids. Right. Pretty heavy quote that. Who or which film was that from? Yeah. So we've got our same five films. Can you remember the one we haven't used yet? Remember, it was the one about real estate selling abc always be closing yeah very very powerful film and it's a film which is it's not it doesn't have remarkable locations or anything it's all set either in the office where these uh, salesmen work or in the bar across the road from the office but the dialogue is crackling it's really great Okay, the answer to that one is Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Yeah, okay, well done, Frank. Glen Gary, you're right. So Glen Gary, Glen Ross is actually the name of a, um, a group of properties that they are trying to sell. So that's why the, the name of the film is, is that. Right, well, those are my 10 films. And um, I think with, without further ado, I'll hand you back to uh, Olga. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, John. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, all these comments and answers and participation in the quiz to our viewers as well. Uh, it's great to see um, new faces, but also uh, our alumni joining as well. Uh, Frank uh, is always here, which is great to see. Um, and uh, John uh, and Perrine, uh, it was a very interesting uh, list of films, and uh, I personally haven't seen quite a few of them, so I would definitely make sure that they're on my watch list now. <laughs> now. Uh, and uh, we do know that uh, films uh, and videos are used quite often to improve uh, the uh, listening comprehension and uh, vocabulary. Um, how can we best use films to help improve um, our vocabulary and listening comprehension? Are there any tricks and tips uh, that you can share? Sorry, uh, John, I'm on mute. I'm on mute. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say uh, these films, I mean, now we have streaming video. It's very easy to, to get practically all of these films, either on you know amazon prime netflix apple tv whatever it is the disney channel uh lots and lots of channels and they all have subtitles so you can watch it with subtitles without subtitles and if it's in terms of trying to help you with your bus business english learning or your or your comprehension of fast spoken native speaker english then you know you can choose to watch it in subtitles for a short time and then try it for a little bit two or three minutes without subtitles uh the other approach is not to try and watch the whole film at once it may be better to take bite sized excerpts from the film and watch a little bit of it uh you know over a period of, of a few nights and maybe watch it without subtitles first and then with subtitles but I think the more you can do it, the more frequently you can do it, even if it's for a relatively short time each time, the easier it becomes. Because I was I was talking to one of my course participants today, actually, and she she's watching a British TV series and she's been watching it for the last three nights, two hours every night. So good for her with subtitles most of the time. And I said uh, today, I said, so this is the third night you've watched this program. Is it getting any easier? She said, well, yeah, yeah, it's definitely getting easier. I can pick up the accents and, and, you know, fast speech, which on Monday 
I didn't really understand at all. Now I'm beginning to get it. So it can be done, definitely. So yes, those are that's my sort of brief advice. Um, and of course, if you can't get it on streaming, then the film, for example, the the um, the corporation, that's available on DVD, I believe, at a pretty cheap price. And it's worth it because it has a lot of extras. And sometimes the DVDs are worth it because the extras are a different kind of listening comprehension because they're face-to-face -face interviews with the characters, the actors, uh, the director perhaps, or how the film was made. So they are mini documentaries rather than being a feature film. And often perhaps a little easier to understand than the dialogue in the film. I, I completely agree with John. And in addition to watching the movie, what I've done, uh, what I'm still doing as a, as a, a lifelong learner of English is to um, read the synopsis because sometimes you've heard um, vocabulary that you don't know. And when you're reading the synopsis, like things are falling into place. There are um, maybe some parts of the movie you may not have understood because obviously they're referring to business situations that you may not be familiar with and by reading the synopsis or reading the plot obviously after you've watched the movie then you can understand a little bit of what's happening and um, as you were saying John the movie about um, the creation of the McDonald franchise and then Empire obviously since this is based on um, real real life um, history it's then interesting for you then to go back and then read about what the movie is about um, to reinforce your vocabulary, basically. So I think it's a good exercise to do that. That's great. Uh, thanks, John and Perrine, for your tips. Um, they're very useful, and I hope our viewers will uh, use them uh, very soon. Um, another question. Uh, given that it's easier to travel um, to the UK now, um, what are the unique advantages of coming over to London to study business English? If I may take that first, I believe that, um, as John was saying, it's really about the immersion, you know, being able to listen to people's accents, patterns. When you're learning online, which, I mean, we, we've, we've been, you know, online for, for the best part of, uh, of the last one and a half year, as soon as you step out of your computer and the online world then you're back to your uh, you know to your day-to-day -day life where English is not spoken so by going to London coming to London then you have the opportunity to be in this immersion 24-7 uh, so your ear is getting used to listening to English uh, every day without you making having to make the effort you know you, you you don't have to then force yourself because that's that's everywhere you just need to absorb uh, English and obviously um, without the subtitles <laughs> it's really you know a useful exercise to have people in in the flesh and being able to interact uh, in, in real life Type. yeah um, thanks Brian I agree with with everything you said there absolutely and as a as a teacher who's spent most of the last year and a half practically all of the last year and a half doing classes online uh, i've got pretty good at doing classes online and it can be a great experience you know you can still create a good rapport and group dynamic and people get a lot out of it but what happens at the coffee break we, we say okay see you in 20 minutes and then you turn your screen off and it goes black and at the end of the class see you all tomorrow everybody you turn your your screen off and that that's for me that's the most difficult part because you can't replicate meeting people face to face at the coffee machine or in the lounge at the London School of English and having those good little chats where you can you know be more natural about finding about, out about the other person and maybe making plans to meet up after the classes finish in the afternoon so I think as you say it's about the the immersion and, and just listening to a lot of English and all these sort of happy accidents where you meet people you didn't expect to talk to and you know, you get on and you, you see that person and people during the week and, and you establish relationships, which is, of course, you know, harder to do online, as many businesses have found, you know, who have teams across the world, international teams, that there's no substitute for that face-to-face -face contact. There really isn't. Yeah, 
and the yeah, courses are great as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And to carry on with what you're saying, John, it's true that in many countries and cultures, business is done over lunch as well. So that's it's it's very important to be able to meet people uh, after hours in more casual situations. And uh, in our school, we're very fortunate to have a beautiful restaurant area where lunch is served and it's really a great opportunity to practice outside of classrooms and get to know people and then you know even like just just practice what your life is going to be when you're having a catch up with a a, a provider or client or with new colleagues um, because obviously there's nothing at stake everyone is here to to learn and enjoy themselves so I guess as you said it's the in-between moments that make the the, the big difference yeah, yeah, in a very supportive and, as you say, relaxed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's no kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's great that uh, there is, uh, there's now this opportunity to actually uh, come and uh, study in London again. Um, but uh, just to remind also that we do have online uh, offering as well. Um, so that's still going on. Um, uh, La one last question, Perrine, for um, anyone who is interested in taking our business uh, English uh, training online or in, in our centre in London, um, what should be their next steps? Uh, thanks for asking, Olga. So if you're interested in business English um, and you don't know where to start, just feel free to uh, go and check our website, www.londonschool.com. Uh, as you can see here below, um, we have a widget where if you put some details about yourself, such as your age, um, what type of um, course delivery you prefer, if you want face to face or if you want online, uh, and um, you, you will have suggestions uh, that would uh, be um, popping up on your screen. Um, and, but obviously, um, I'm available and my colleagues are available to support you if you have any questions. Uh, about what course you should be uh, picking, uh, how long you should be studying for, anything that is related to your courses, feel free to contact us. We have an email address, clients at londonschool.com. Uh, feel free to uh, say hi, um, give us your details and we'll get back to you. Great, thank you, Perrine. And uh, on this note, uh, we, uh, would, we will wrap uh, um, we'll wrap our, our, our um, session uh, today and uh, we'd like to say thank you again to John for this fantastic list of films, Green for, uh, for her suggestions uh, and uh, to our viewers uh, for their active participation. So we hope to see you again uh, on this live, uh, or on this uh, channel on YouTube or in our center or online training. Thank you, John. Thank you, Olga. See you, everyone, very soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.